Aiming in Warzone is hard. You have to track enemies up close, track them far away, switch between multiple targets, flick onto enemies, center in the correct places, but it's probably the most important skill to have because as useful as advanced movement is, you can't slide cancel your enemies to death. Yo, you're gonna shoot him? You're gonna shoot him? If this is a war game, you get a gun and you shoot people. Oh my god. And a big part of why aiming is so hard is you have to find the right controller settings or sensitivities. Your sensitivity basically controls how responsive your crosshair is when you move your thumbstick. At higher sensitivities, you can move your aim faster, but it's going to be more difficult to control. It's kind of like driving a sports car. It might seem fun to go really fast, but at those top speeds, it's very easy to lose control. So finding the right sensitivity is about navigating this balance. But that's easier said than done. Because when you open the controller settings page, it can be pretty overwhelming. There are so many different possible combinations that if you try to do the math with how many there are, your head might actually explode. And if you search the internet for help, many people claim to have the best settings, but each video recommends something different. And then I play on 2020. I go 9977 seven sensitivity. So how do you know which ones are actually the best? It becomes very easy to get trapped in an endless loop, changing your sensitivity settings over and over again every time you lose a gunfight. And even after you're done playing for the night, you find yourself still thinking about the game. You hold on to some hope that one day you'll find those perfect controller settings and start dropping high kill games like the top Warzone players. Well, that might sound familiar to you because that was the situation I found myself in. And it took me a long time to figure this out, but the best settings don't actually exist. You can't just copy someone else's controller sensitivity expecting to see improvement. You have to find the right settings for your gaming setup and for your playstyle. And because I'm a nerd, I came up with a way to test my controller settings to see if they were any good. But more on that in a minute. Because first, you have to understand that there's really two reasons why you can't just copy someone's settings. Let's break it down. The first reason is that all controllers are different, even ones that look identical. When anything is made or manufactured, there are slight differences from one part to the next. So the analog sticks in one controller might feel looser or tighter compared to an identical controller. And looser analog sticks will make you feel like you're playing on a higher sensitivity than what you actually are. And the differences can also be more extreme. Some players prefer to use taller thumbsticks or analog sticks with added tension. And both these things will drastically change the feel of your aim because for a given force exerted by your thumb, the torque will be higher. Boring, shut up, nerd. Okay, the science isn't really important. What is important is that every controller is different. And now for the other factor, you. Or, well, actually your thumb. Just like any other skill, some people will be able to control their aim at higher sensitivities better than others naturally, or because they have more time to devote to improving their skill. I'm gonna do something which no gamer has done before. Some people also like to play more aggressive, so they might gravitate towards a higher sensitivity, while others like to play more tactical, so a lower sense may be better for them. The important thing is that we're all different and play different, so you have to find the right sense for you. But how do we do that? Well, we practice our centering. Now I feel like centering is this mystical word that the top players talk about, but it's widely misunderstood within the COD community. And this is partially due to people having slightly different definitions of the word. But the easiest way to think about it is that it's your crosshair placement while you aren't aimed down sight. Players with good centering anticipate where their opponents will be and place their crosshair in those locations near chest to head level. This minimizes the time spent adjusting their aim when an opponent actually appears and it allows them to start hitting shots as soon as possible. Now, on the other hand, players with bad centering have to spend critical time in a gunfight moving their crosshair to the enemy before they can land any bullets. They typically aim at the ground or sky when running around the map, which really doesn't make any sense because an enemy isn't going to appear from either of those locations. And if they do, well, it's a hacker. <laughs> the thing is, when it comes to aim, flicking and tracking get all the attention, but centering is actually what's most important in Warzone because the time to kill is so low. The person who hits the first bullet usually wins the gunfight. And I know you might be saying, what are you going on and on about? Centering is easy. Well, you're just 
don't get it, do you? You don't. It's no hassle. I used to think this too, but good centering is actually really difficult. Because if you watch any good player play, they're constantly moving around the map and making micro adjustments to their aim to keep their centering on target. And these adjustments get even harder with the more advanced movements that are used. And also there's oftentimes situations during the game where enemies may appear from multiple locations. And this means that good players are switching their aim between several targets based on their positioning and the probability of where they think an enemy most likely will appear. So to have great centering, you really need great aim control. And your ability to control your aim is tied directly to, okay, hint, we talked about this earlier. Anyone, anyone? Um, movement. No, Tim, get out of here. Don't you remember that chart from earlier? It's your sensitivity settings. So what this means is that we can find our best sensitivity settings by using our centering. I recently had the urge to change my settings and here's what I did to test them. The first thing I knew I needed to do was to find the maximum sensitivity I could use while still having good centering. So I started by creating a custom game in Modern Warfare multiplayer. I then made up an imaginary path and picked several targets along that path where I thought enemies could appear. I started with a sensitivity of 6-6 and the goal was simple. To run back and forth on the path, centering to each target, and to slowly raise my sensitivity until my aim started to become really inconsistent. And here's what that looked like. I gave myself as much time as necessary to get adjusted to each sensitivity and then watch back a recording before making any adjustments. If my centering was controlled and accurate, I bumped up to the next sensitivity. And if it wasn't, I knew I was at my maximum. I know I use eight targets for my tests, but if you're new to centering and finding that too difficult, just start with three or four. Also, if you're struggling to find a good starting sensitivity, I linked a spreadsheet in the description below with 20 different pro Warzone player settings. But hold up, did you see that? Let's take a closer look at my aim right there. Now it was subtle, so you're gonna have to take a pretty close look. But when I got to 9, I couldn't stop myself from overshooting or undershooting the targets. And that was even after giving myself plenty of time to warm up to the sensitivity. And if you compare that to 8, you can see that my aim was much more deliberate and controlled. And what this told me is that I really shouldn't go past 8 unless I want to dedicate the time to practice my centering at that higher sensitivity. Now I typically do this test a few times to get the best result, but once I find my max setting, I actually dial it back a bit. Because when I get into an actual game, there's so many things going on that I can't focus 100% of my attention on my aim like during the exercise. I need to play on a sensitivity that I don't have to think about. And for me, that's 7-7. But the main reason I'm sharing this test with you is to help you avoid the mistake that I made early on. I fell into the Warzone YouTube TikTok trap trying to play at a higher sensitivity because it looked cool and not for any practical reasons. But this stopped me from getting better and led me to lose a lot of gunfights. I had to figure out that there's nothing wrong with playing at a lower sensitivity. Obviously you still need to be able to react to getting shot in the back, so I probably wouldn't ever go below 4, but I would always recommend to prioritize your aiming control over speed and Warzone. And the good news is that if I ever want to play at a higher sensitivity, I can still absolutely do that. I just might need to spend more time practicing my centering at those higher settings. And now that we've got our sensitivity dialed in, we should be ready to go now, right? Well, not quite. In a gunfight, good centering only gets you so far. Enemies don't stand in one place. Okay, well, most enemies. So you'll also need to have good tracking. And this is where the ADS multiplier comes into play. As the name implies, when you aim down sight, this multiplier kicks in and adjusts your sensitivity by its value. So if you're playing on 1010 with a 0.8 multiplier, when you ADS, your sensitivity becomes 8. Now to find the right value, you really need to get into a lot of gunfights. And you can do this a few different ways, like using bots in a custom game or dropping into hot spots like Prison on Rebirth. But the best option that I've found is to get a friend and drop into Plunder or a custom game of Modern Warfare. 
And what you want to do is have your friends strafe back and forth at different distances while you practice tracking their movement. And then once you get comfortable with that, have your friends start using advanced movements like slide canceling and bunny hopping. And then through trial and error, you want to adjust your ADS multiplier until your tracking feels really consistent. Now, I don't use any of the custom zoom multipliers, but if you choose to do so, you can repeat this for each scope zoom setting that you want to change. And also, if you need someone to practice with, make sure to leave a comment down below. Now, I know a lot of you don't have Modern Warfare multiplayer, but you can do both of the tests that I've shown you in Plunder. Any deserted part of the map will work well for the ADS testing. Just keep in mind that you won't have aim assist on your friend, so it will be a bit harder. And for the centering testing, there are a lot of great places in the capital or resort area of the map with plenty of windows and doorways for targets. And those are the best ways that I've found to dial in the perfect controller settings. If you take away one thing from this video, it's that centering helps you find your best controller sensitivity and tracking helps you dial in your ADS multiplier. Now, I don't change my controller settings that often because muscle memory plays a big part in aiming consistency, but when I do need to change them because I've got a new controller or because, well, I feel the need, the need for speed. I make sure to change them for the right reasons. And that's all I have for you today. If you want to practice your aim even more, you can check out my five favorite drills right here. Thanks for watching, and as always, I hope to see you in the next one.